What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this evening. So what we're going to be covering in this update video are some of the changes that we've seen on the Ortex short interest and utilization data that I think are important going into the end of this week. Now, in addition, we're also going to take another look at the option chain uh, and just see essentially what's changed from yesterday into today. And we also have to talk about the max pain, but the two main important things that I want to go over, actually three main important things that I want to cover in this video is this Citadel situation uh, when FINRA actually basically charged them with naked short selling a little while ago. Now, this kind of just goes to show that all of the different things that these media outlets have been saying, Fintel and a lot of these other different organizations, that this stuff does not happen and the penalties for this are severe and that organizations don't actually want to do this um, and they are actually incentivized not to, is just absolutely false. Now, in addition, we also have this really, really strong securities lending and essentially short sale reporting comment section for this new proposed rule change coming to an end actually by the end of this week. And some of the details of this report are absolutely awesome. And it is really going to give retail investors and investors in total a way to really kind of peek behind the curtain to see exactly what is going on in this really dark and shaded securities lending market. The last thing that I want to talk about, um, is these new failure to deliver numbers coming out for AMC exactly what they mean, compare them to what we've seen in the past and what this means for us going forward. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So when we're looking at the chart of AMC, see today obviously it wasn't pretty we were down a dollar and three cents 3.88 percent and we finished the day at 25 dollars and 48 cents we saw iwm the russell 2000 basically the small cap etf being pretty volatile throughout the day we saw gme having a pretty significant sell-off at one point today as well and amc was just kind of caught in the mix between a lot of these different things and when we look at the other competitors of amc uh namely cinemark uh cinemark actually had a decently strong day today going up 1.18 percent and with AMC AMC being the best and largest movie theater corporation in the world, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that companies like Cinemark and IMAX are green on a, <laughs> on a day that AMC is deep in the red. Now, when we come over to the Ortex data over here, Utilization, 75.53%. An estimated short interest as a percentage of the free flow, 17.04%. So we are seeing a little bit of a bump up in the estimates here. But again, these are just bare baseline minimum numbers that could be reflective of the actual short interest out in the market right now. The only way that we can really get a good understanding of the actual bare baseline absolute minimum short interest is when these exchange reported numbers come out. Now, we should be getting those next week um, for the new uh, exchange reported short interest interest numbers, I would honestly expect to see a little bit of a decrease when these numbers come out. But with the price action that we've seen after um, the next settlement date that we are looking at really mainly this week, I would expect to see the estimated short interest or the exchange reported short interest go above 19% again. Now, the reason why I really still like to use Ortex for a lot of its data is for just a couple of things. I like to look at the days to cover, and I also like to look at average days on loan, which has really given us a decent understanding of where these danger zones are. If we start to see the days on uh, average days on loan start to come down again, they are creating an even lower danger zone, meaning that if the price starts to really rally up again from these lows, uh, lows it's going to be very, very difficult for these short institutions to really hold on to their positions without getting a margin call after margin call. Now, when we come over to Stonko Tracker over here, let's give this a quick refresh to just kind of see where we finished on the day. We have 108,000 contracts in the money and we have 494,000 call contracts out of the money. I would expect the out of the money contracts to get above 500,000 tomorrow. And these are just going to add fuel to the fire on the potential for a massive gamma squeeze coming up ahead of this January expiration, down, uh, expiration date. Now, again, Nothing is guaranteed with this options chain, but what we do have to keep in mind is that every single time we've seen a big, um, 
or one of the blow off top significant moves on AMC to the upside, it has always coincided with a nasty option chain like we are seeing here. So it is a relevant part of this that we need to keep taking a look at. Now, when we come over to the Max Payne chart, we're seeing it at 28 this week. And if we finished around Max Payne, I don't think a lot of people would really be all that upset uh, because that is going to be about two or three dollars uh, away from where we're currently trading at. It would be a nice bounce back up. Now, let's get into this situation with Citadel and their lawsuit that FINRA essentially charged them with uh, back a little while ago. So when we're taking a look at this right here, we can see Department of Market Regulation, FINRA, uh, uh, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, and from Citadel. So when we see here acceptance and consent, the firm hereby accepts and consents without admitting or denying the findings and solely for the purposes of this proceeding and any other proceeding brought by or on behalf of FINRA or to which FINRA, uh, FINRA is a party prior to a hearing and without an ad, uh, adjudication of any issue of law or fact to the entry of the following findings by FINRA. Now, when we come down a little bit further, Beginning on December 2008 uh, and continuing through February of 2009 in 14 instances of, uh, involving four equity securities as reflected in Exhibit A, the firm had a failed to deliver position at a registered clearing agency that was attributable to market making activities meaning that what they were essentially doing was taking the other side of the trade, making sure that they were providing liquidity into the market, using their legal ability as a market maker to make it short, but then just didn't close out the failure to deliver position, which they were supposed to do. But that's not necessarily the important part. Here's where the important part comes. Between December of 2008 and February of 2009, in 49 instances involving two equity securities as reflected on Exhibit B, the firm accepted a short sale order from another person or affected a short sale for its own account without first borrowing the security or entering into a bona fide agreement to borrow the security and had a fail to deliver position at a registered clearing agency in such security that had not been closed out in accordance with the requirements of paragraphs A and B from this SEC rule right here. So the important thing about this filing from back in 2008 and 2009 is that these things do happen. You cannot sweep these under the rug. This is an occurrence that is happening in our market, and it is irrefutable that these actions do take place. But here's the crazy part. When you come down a little bit further, we can see right here that, well, they had 14 instances in this first one, and then down here, 49 instances um, below in this second violation. When we come down a little bit further and take a look at the penalty, the firm also consents to the imposition at a maximum of the following sanctions, a censure in fine of $50,000. That is absolutely insane. This is less than $1,000 per violation in any one of these given securities. That is absolutely insane. And there needs to be a lot of things that are going to be done about this. And the SEC, even though they aren't kind of working directly with what we have going on with AMC and GME, we are seeing them do things that are trying to make the securities lending market a little bit more transparent. And there is this rule right here that is supposed to be coming out. The comment period is going to be ending, I believe, on January 7th. And here's essentially what this uh, rule is going to include. And the things listed here are going to be made to the public, the legal name of the issuer of the securities to be borrowed, the ticker symbol, the time and the date of the loan, the name of the platform or venue if one is used. That is a pretty important part. So we would see if it was interactive brokers, potentially even Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, or any one of these other vendors that are loaning out these securities, amount of securities loan, any of the rates and fees charged. And here is the most important part that I see right here. The type of collateral provided for the loan and the percentage of the collateral provided to the value of loaned securities. What this is going to be able to tell us is essentially how much the stock is going to need to go up after this loan goes out and the securities are sold in order for this specific firm with that position to be facing a margin call. This is probably the most important piece of data that we are going to be able to get if this new proposed rule change goes live. But 
What we are not going to see um, as members of the public are the legal names of the parties to the loan um, and some of these other important things um, that we really need to see, like here, like whether the loan will be used to close out a fail to deliver persi uh, pos uh, position, which honestly is kind of insane that they're not going to include this because that is one of the ways around uh, closing out these failure to deliver positions. They just take out a loan of securities and just say that they have the shares um, in order to kick the can down the road with these FTDs. Now, speaking about failure to delivers, AMC has had a pretty significant uptick in some of the failure to delivers in their security. So we can see that the amount of FTDs for AMC was about 405,000. Now we've seen these numbers go into the million share range in the past, so it's not necessarily a crazy high amount of failure to delivers specifically not enough to get it on the threshold securities list. We need persistent failure to delivers for five days or more of, I believe, 0.5% of the total float or shares outstanding um, of AMC. But when you compare it to some of these other companies, Apple, 36,407. Now, remember, Apple was going on an absolute moon mission. And the way that some of these failed failure to delivers occur is that if these market makers who or whoever is selling these options um, cannot deliver on their obligation of basically delivering shares uh, to the counterparty that they sold these options contracts to. So that is an explanation. Um, but again, you see that these failure to delivers are not necessarily that high, specifically for Apple, even though it was ripping. Microsoft, zero. Google, one. Amazon, 43. Tesla, 494. Facebook, zero. NVIDIA, 1600. Uh, Berkshire B, 69. JP Morgan, zero. Visa had a decent amount. But again, none of these are going to compare to what AMC's failure, failure to delivers are. And what this really tells us is that there is something going on behind the scenes. There is some manipulation. There is some nefarious activity going on with AMC because when you think about failure to delivers, yes, they can be created through other ways, just like we went over with that Apple example. But when you see increasingly high failures to deliver um, and they're persistent, it shows us that there is something going on. So that is going to mainly wrap up this update with AMC and this whole Citadel naked shorting situation. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great evening and I'll see you guys in the next one.